I felt like I, I uh, how can I put this? I felt like I'd, I'd made a, uh, what do they call it when like you go to uh, therapy or something like that? And, a uh, breakthrough? A, a breakthrough. Yeah. felt like I made a breakthrough this week with this show. Because the show aired and uh, I didn't give a shit about it. You, you know? You've been to this level before. Not really like this though. Like I totally didn't care. Like I, I felt about this show like exactly how I felt about Ultimate Fighter this week. You know, it's on for an hour. Some of the stuff was all right. Some of the stuff, like the fight, sucked. Then it ended, and and uh, in in like a minute later, I literally tried to forget everything about it. It's kind of how I felt about this show. Maybe it's because I I went to WrestleMania weekend, and it was so gigantic. You know, I saw the fucking Rock being the Rock in a building in front of seventy one thousand people. You know, mm. and then I I saw like. I saw two awesome Ring of Honor and one awesome Dragon Gate show. And now I'm watching Impact on television. You know? It didn't even seem second rate this week. It seemed like about 10th rate. Oh, it's... Yes. No, it was... Uh, yeah. Like, when I think of, of quality professional wrestling, it's like, okay, you know, WrestleMania, the biggest show of the year, and and two great ROH shows, and, and Dragon Gate... And remember that PWG show I went to? God damn, that was great. And, uh, you know, Tough Enough. Steve Austin cutting promos on Geeks. That was pretty awesome. And then there's Impact. Low on the fucking totem pole. It seems like an entirely different industry. Yeah, I, it, it seems like people... You know what Impact is? It's like WWE doesn't want to be wrestling. They want to be entertainment. Right. And and TNA, like, they're proud to be wrestling, but they have no idea what they're doing. Sure. I mean, this is just like, Lance brought this up. These people are so stupid that they don't understand how bad they look yeah. on this network angle. The, the network angle, everybody, for those of you that think, the network angle, which, by the way, is nobody in TNA, the network angle is that TNA is so shitty and the ratings are so low that the network, Spike TV apparently, has to step in to try to make the show better. Right. The network is stepping in to sign people. The network is stepping in to sign main events. The network is stepping in to do all of these things. Why? Because I guess in storyline, TNA just can't get the job done. What a fucking storyline. We are fools, so therefore a higher power is trying to save the day. (laughs) Yes. Wow. That is a money storyline right there. And that's their main storyline. The network. This show opened up with a recap of last week's show, which I missed. It was actually a hell of a recap. They showed the Chris Daniels return, jumping off the cage... Made the angle look really cool. Of course, my first question, literally a moment into this recap, was, why the fuck did they book a cage match for free on television two weeks before an all-cage pay-per-view? Is that not an elementary mistake? Because they are fools. Uh, Yeah, that's the answer. So Daniels came out and cut a promo. And uh, this was funny because, again, these people are complete idiots, these these writers. They they have him talk about... his, His line is like... I've had a contentious relationship with this company. I've I've been on their good side. I've gotten myself in trouble. I've been fired. And then later on in the promo, he says, My best friend got beat up, so I figured now was the time to return. You figured? So so you can come and go as you please? Because that's certainly not what you said a minute earlier. Right. So he <laughs> talked about how, you know, his best friend got beat up. He, he had the line about how AJ and I have been on both sides of the fence you know we've we've been friends and we've been enemies but we always had our backs really so when you hated each other you had each other's backs by the way i'm not blaming chris daniels for any of this because i saw chris daniels in in ring of honor this weekend and he's a megastar then you put him on this show and you write a bunch of shit for him and he's just another geek so all this stuff happened and flair aj or flair abyss matt hardy and bully came out 
And apparently Fla- is Flair in lethal lockdown? Because that's certainly what they indicated here. I believe so, yes. Flair is in lethal lockdown. He's going to wrestle. Huh. You would think they made that clear? So they made fun of Daniels. Said he didn't know who he was. A week has passed. He has still not learned the man's identity. I am. And uh, said nobody wanted him there. Just leave. And then Hogan came out. And essentially he said, you know, kind of uh, what did he really say? It was well, before, like, before he came out, Flair told Daniels he had no contract. He had to leave. Daniels said, well, you may not want me here. That's right. The network. Hogan may not want me here. I thought he was going to say, the people want me here. But no, the network wants him here. And then Hogan later on actually did come that, out that and say. Hogan out. Yeah. He said, you're okay. I'll sign you to a contract. That's if, fine. If the network wants you on TV, great. Sure. So he put him in lethal lockdown. He said that was fine. Signed him against Bully Ray. And then Bully cut a promo on him. Told him to go back to California. Put on more makeup. It ended up in a brawl. And Hogan called security. It was a TNA opening segment. Thankfully, yep. did not go through a full segment. Yeah, they all start like this now. Mm. A, a lot of talking, a lot of entrances. Yeehaw. 2011, and every show has to start with the boring 20-minute promo. Yes. It's like, it's like they really have invented a time machine. You know? <laughs> and they went, back to, they went back to the past and got all the stuff that sucked. Ken Anderson was backstage at his desk. Why does Ken Anderson have a desk? I'm not sure. He was at a desk. He had supplies and a uh, letter. Letter. It was a letter from Sting. It was a poem. Call him a dick or whatever. And then Anderson started to sing about douchebags. It sucked. I don't. Every Mr. Anderson segment on this show sucked. That is true. He literally. Is he the most annoying character in the history of wrestling? No. Um, Who tops him? Stephanie McMahon. I don't know if you about think that. Back. Huh? If you think back. She also had giant hooters. <laughs> and Anderson doesn't. No. And while that normally goes a long way, I, by the end, never want to see her on TV again. And to be frank, I still I haven't don't. wanted to see Mr. Anderson on TV for months now. Yeah. I, I, I still cast my vote for Mr. Anderson as the most annoying character in the history of wrestling. So, then we had uh, more talking. Yeah. I was just trying desperately to eat an orange, and I kept having to fucking type what these people were saying. This show is starving you. It was literally starving me to death. I, I've, I've, I was going to get uh, uh, scurvy due to lack of vitamin C because of this fucking show. So, Hogan is uh, pissed off at the network. He basically said, not using these exact words... That we spent six months building an angle where I won the court case to get full control, and now they've added a mystery network above me. Actually, that almost is his exact words. Yeah. That's very close to what he said. He was tired of the damn network, so anyway, join the club. He smelled a rat and wanted Eric Bischoff to take care of it. Hernandez and El Anarchia against Devon and uh, Tommy Dreamer. He hit Dreamer with a chair behind the ref's back for the DQ. The girls interfered to the finish. Hernandez was going to kill Dreamer with a border toss. Hernandez... Morgan Somebody saved. made the save. Morgan. Somebody. God damn it. I was hoping this fucking feud would just end. No. It must continue. So, yes, we waited 20 minutes for a match. 20, went through 20 minutes of shit to get to a match. The match went three minutes. And then in a... In a I, was, I wasn't a DQ. At least I could peel my orange. <laughs> Progress. We then had Winter backstage with Angelina. Angelina was still in a stupor. A comatose, a, a trance, whatever you want to call it. Drugged! Drugged? That is the angle. It, it is. She's on drugs. Winter was uh, scolding her for wanting to team with Velvet Sky again. She actually said the words, I love you, Angelina, so it is officially a lesbian angle. And then she told her to keep drinking, and Angelina was still poisoned. We had Samoa Joe versus Murphy. <laughs> Samoa Joe versus Murphy. <laughs> I'm going to say this again. Samoa Joe versus Murphy. At least he beat him fast. Pope was on commentary. He came out to do commentary for a match that went 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Choked him out, chased Pope to the back. Never saw them again. Never again. Kane Anderson, after diligently working hard at his desk, took a break to go get some coffee. He's a receptionist now. 
I guess. I wish he was. <laughs> I would prefer that. <laughs> he was... He went to get coffee. He found another letter from Sting. It made him angry, and he cursed. The most annoying character of all time. Why was he so angry about this letter? I'm not even sure anyone actually even comes close. Velvet and Angelina against Sarita and Rosita. Angelina came out as a zombie. God, this sucked. She's a zombie. She walks to the ring practically covered in dirt. <laughs> Velvet, though... While she recognizes that things are going wrong and she has to guide Angelina around by the hand, was still content to team with her. Well, of course. I mean, people are talking about enabling. Led around by the hand in this company all the time. At least, at least with Jeff, they told Stain to pin him in 30 seconds. So, Winner comes out and she makes the sign of breaking a stick in two, at which point, which was apropos, at which point Angelina beats up Velvet and then Rosita pinned her. I'm almost positive they piped in booing here. This I've yeah, they have they, five shades of awful was this <laughs> you may not have done in this segment but I have I have called them piping and crowd noise before when you were here a reaction and you look at the people and no one was making this reaction this blue this is very very terrible so Anderson was on the hunt for Sting he ran into Eric Young and Orlando Jordan in the most annoying manner possible of course can I add that <laughs> you may you may so uh, Eric started talking about champions it was stupid. He advised Kid Anderson to search for Sting in the rafters. That's what he said. Anderson did not think about this, by the way. Of course not. Sting has been hiding in the rafters since 1997, nearly a decade and a half. Yeah. And Anderson did not think to look there. No, of course not. Orlando then added to Mr. Anderson, quote, I'm into your whole asshole thing. I'm totally into your totally whole asshole thing. Totally into your thing. whole asshole thing. This made Anderson uncomfortable, and he left. <sighs> Glad we'll write another letter, hopefully. Then we went to commercial. When they came back, Anderson was back in the rafters. Yeah. This segment was shot like a horror movie where you are down to the last survivor and the monster alone in the haunted house. He was creeping around with a pipe, looking back over his shoulder, looking left, looking right, looking up, looking down. Then, of course... I have one word for this. Shit. Excruciating. <laughs> it was not good. Of course, despite all this, all his uh, caution, Rob Van Dam still stuck up behind him. He was dressed in a trench coat, you see, to fool us into thinking he would be staying for four seconds. So he attacked Mr. Anderson. He beat him up for minutes. He beat him. Minutes? Hours? He beat him and beat him and beat him. And after this thrashing, after this mauling, this manhandling, he got down to the ground, and he put Mr. Anderson in a head scissors. Yes, he did. He beat the shit out of him, like, with all sorts of stuff. And, and then he puts him in a head yeah. scissors. It's not like Anderson was fighting up and Rob put him in a head scissors to hold him down. Mr. Anderson was down on the ground, prone, beaten, defeated. And then Rob squeezed his leg with his thighs. Or squeezed, squeezed his head with his thighs. Yeah. This is the longest segment of the show. Then they went to commercial. When they came back, they replayed it. Yeah. Now, it's very important to note that Mr. Anderson was left for dead. Due to the power of Rob Van Dam's thighs. He was left for dead! So Sting came out. He called out Rob Van Dam. RVD showed up. Sting said he returned to TNA to stop Hogan and Bischoff, but he got distracted by Rob Van Dam and Mr. Anderson. He started talking about how Sting's title, Rob, never lost it. Rob said they had been on different pages since March of last year when... This, this is all they did to recap whatever happened in March of last year, 13 months ago. All I remember is a thousand baseball bats. So Sting apologized. Sting up, stood back before Rob Van Dam and all the people publicly issued an apology for what I did last March, he said. He made a mistake. I don't know what he did last March. <laughs> I don't either. I presume he I hit know. RVD with a bat. Perhaps multiple times. Yeah. I don't know. So, Rob talked about working undercards, on, under, uh, on the undercards of Sting matches, where no matter what he did, people only wanted to see Sting. Now, though, he is not a small part of the show. He's the whole fucking show, and Sting was going to learn that at lockdown, so that part of the promo was fine. Hogan then interrupted... And decided if they wanted to fight, he would book them in a one-on-one -on -one match for this show. Mm -hmm. Tonight! Yeah. Impact, everyone. 
He had no good explanation for it, Ow. such as... The network told me to. We don't care about pay-per-views, <laughs> so we just give shit away. Sure. Since we know it, it makes no difference in ratings, but we're still going to do it, and it will make absolutely no difference in anything. No. So Madison... Except it will prevent people from actually buying the pay-per-view. Good. The less people who watch this product, the better. Madison and Tara were fighting backstage. Tara didn't want to follow Madison's orders. Madison said, if you don't, you'll go back to scrubbing toilets. So apparently that's the only two things Tara can do. Wrestle professionally or scrub toilets. Who is say? Go to school, kids. <laughs> yeah. They went off to do some sort of mission. There was, there was too much screaming here. It sucked. Bubba Ray and Daniels was signed earlier, and I, I just learned at this point it was a lumberjack match. Yeah. Why? Why not? Of course. Robbie E. and Generation Me against Kendrick, Saban, and Suicide. Match was all right. The story is that Generation Me were having problems. Max was trying to boss his brother around. And finally, Jeremy refused to listen, so Max gave him a draping DDT. They brought in Generation Me, and they have already broken them up. Yeah. You, you must... It, in TNA, no tag team is allowed to get along, even when they really are brothers. Well, beer money is. They're the only ones, I think. I guess so. Even even Gunner slapped Murphy the next segment. Hogan told <laughs> Gunner to slap Murphy and Rob Terry for fucking something up. I didn't watch the show last week, and they didn't bother showing a replay, so I have ab so fucking lutely no idea why. I did watch the show. I still have no idea. So then Anderson walked up, and he essentially threw in the towel. He was sick of being beaten up every week. He wanted to be the special ref for the main event. Hogan said he'd been waiting for this day to come, and Anderson played it up like he was joining Immortal, and uh, Hogan told him to take the pipe in case he needed it. Hmm. <laughs> Trying to be bite Hogan in the ass. So then we cut to outside where in a giant pile are Tara and Madison and Mickey James in the motorcycle. The bad girls get back on the bike and drive off. The cameraman runs up, actually puts the camera down and then tries to help Mickey. So yes, that was the angle. Madison's orders were Tara, run over Mickey James with your motorcycle and murder her. Yeah. And make sure that, that uh, it's in close proximity to where cameras will be. Sure. Plenty of witnesses. And by the way, there there is uh, there is footage of this. So so will charges not be filed? Of course not. Of course not. We had Bubba Ray versus Chris Daniels in a lumberjack match. It was fine. Daniels had the win with the best moonsault ever, but Flair pulled the ref to the floor. This was great. He pulls the ref to the floor, but you know the ref lets it go because it's you know a few rules I guess here in this. Lumberjack match. So then they start brawling, and Flair punches Daniels with the Nux. Hogan. I'm sorry, Hogan punches him with the Nux. And uh, and Ray pinned him. Yeah, the key was, at one point, Bubba tried to use a chain, but the ref was not okay with that. But then when Flair pulled the ref out of the ring to break up the pin, the ref was totally fine with that. So you had, you had I just, I, I, I hate inconsistent. You had shit. I hate inconsistency. You had a shitty segment produced by shitty people. You're not allowed to hit a guy with a chain in a lumberjack match. But a guy can pull the fucking referee out of the ring and the ref's like, oh, who cares? Even though, you know, he was counting a pin. <laughs> it's blue. Indeed it the match was the, the match was all right. It but was everything fine. surrounding it was stupid. Bo- as always. It was shitty, yes. As always. And also, hell of a return in TNA for Chris Daniels. Yeah. Hits one dive and then jobs. Jared came out for a promo inside a steel cage. Really? He uh, talked to said his, he said Kurt purposely violated his restraining order last week so he wouldn't have to wrestle Jared. He was ranting on and on about what a coward Kurt was and how he was the ultra male. He called out Karen Angle, but Kurt's music played, and then Kurt used Suicide's zip line to get into the ring. They were in the process of building the cage. He ordered them to put up the fourth wall, so. Here's Kurt's trap. He has caught Jarrett inside the cage, leading up to an all-cage match show, where the whole gimmick of a cage is, no one can get in or out. So Jarrett looks around, he sees the angry man who wants to kill him, he is surrounded by four sides, and he turns around and he climbs out the cage and leaves. Mm -hmm. Just that easy. Mm -hmm. Gimmick dead! Yeah. God! (laughs) So then... 
They stared well, at, at each least other. They, uh, at least they built up kind of one match for the pay-per-view. You, you were left wanting to see Kurt get his hands on him. I had no problem with this segment. The only problem I had with this segment... In fact, looking back, this may have been the best segment on the show. That's entirely possible. The only, the only problem I had with this segment was, was actually the zip line. But now that you've explained it was suicide zip line, at least there's an explanation for a fucking zip line being in the... I was just... I was sitting there watching and going, wait a second. This was your plan, Kurt? You, you came in before the show and installed a fucking zip line? <laughs> yes. It's r- ridiculous. But I can I can buy the idea that he stole he stole Suicide's gimmick. So I give this segment a thumbs up. Best segment on the show. It ended with Kurt on top of the cage, his music playing, and Mike Tanay said, "This Sunday he will find or whenever he will finally have the chance to get his hands on Jeff Jarrett." Haven't they got their hands on each other like ninety times? Well, moreover, he'll finally get the his, he'll finally get his hands on Jarrett unless Jarrett runs away again, like no. he just did. Yeah, maybe it'll be pin, fall, submission, or escape the cage. In which case, Jeff would have won. Oh, yeah. Anyway, Kurt did a backstage promo. He uh, explained that he was not in jail because the cops watched the video. They saw uh, exactly how Kurt was set up last week. They also uh, were sure to call Karen a bitch here because she's a woman. And on TNA, all women are bitches. You know how stupid these people are? I thought I did, and every week they surprised me. These people are so stupid. That nobody apparently thought, well, if the cops watched the video with Karen, wouldn't it stand to reason that they'll watch the video with the girls fucking running over Mickey James? They, they only watch the video that the writers tell them to watch. Huh. Cops are uh, I th- I think not the, trustworthy in Florida. I think the police should watch that video and send those girls to jail. I think the cops should watch it, this video and just start shooting. Tried to kill her. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Kurt added that he uh, would be having his case with Jared at the pay-per-view, and he added, the network has added a stipulation. He would not so, tell us what it was. Why would, it's why a would mystery stip. the network give a shit about what's on pay-per-view? Don't know. That doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. Nor does having a mystery stipulation. We're supposed to buy the pay-per-view to see what kind of match it will be? Yeah, of course. People don't buy stuff for wrestling or storylines video. They buy it for stipulations. Hello? I mean, duh. Yeah, Rob Van Dam versus Sting in the main event. At least it was the main event. I've, I've almost fallen asleep doing this review, everybody. <laughs> That's how little I give a shit about, about this show. Rob Van Dam versus Sting with it's Mr. Anderson as ref. to stay awake. They did some stuff for a few minutes, and then Anderson laid out Sting with a mic check, and then Rob Van Dam with the five-star frog splash and pinned him. So whatever. Anderson then laid out Rob as well. He was alone in the ring. For some reason, this made Murphy and Rob Terry happy. I'm not sure why they're chums now. But Murphy and Rob Terry came down to the ring clapping. They threw him up on their shoulders. They carried him around. Hogan came out on the ramp. They all gave each other the thumbs up. Then they put Anderson down, and he, of course, killed them with a pipe. This made Hulk Hogan very angry. He cursed a lot, and the show ended. (sighs) I'm going to come out of my coma to just ask this question. All right. What fucking sense did this make? I, th- <laughs> let me let me let me try and figure this out. So, what was Mr. Anderson's end game? To make Hogan mad? I guess. Why? Cuz he's a badass with a disrespect of authority. Why is he mad at Hogan? Cuz he hates everyone. Cuz he's a Steve Austin ripoff. And Hogan is in charge. I just don't understand where, if, if even if you look back at the show, he he went to join up with Hogan supposedly because he was sick of getting beat up every week, right? Right. Who the fuck beat him up? Rob Van Dam. Who he helped win? <laughs> Am I missing something here? No, RVD. You're not. No. So 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 just to just to look back here, RVD. Beat the shit out of Mr. Anderson and left him for dead. And Mr. Anderson's response was to tell Hulk he wanted to join up with him and referee the main event. At which point he helped Rob Van Dam, who left him for dead, beat Sting. And then he, I guess, laid out Rob and then and then laughed at Hogan and, and revealed he had lied to him. 
what in the hell does anything have to do with anything here? I don't know. I don't know. They're, they're, it occurs to me, they are, as we all know, trying to do Austin McMahon with Mr. Anderson and Hulk Hogan. Yeah, it's not working. No. It's it, not even close. Do you know? Well, there are many reasons why. It's not why. even the same... It, it's not but even the same business. It's not even the same industry. For many months, even before Steve Austin and Vincent Mann were feuding, they teased tension. There was Austin ruining Mike Tyson's appearance, and uh, Vince, even before the title match, saying he absolutely did not want Austin to win. But then he did, and uh, they tried to get along, but Vince made sure he was the boss. The point being, Vince gave Austin... he, He acted like an authority figure, which gave Austin cause to rebel. Hogan and Anderson, their paths have barely crossed, except that Anderson hates him, but he hates everyone. Well, one of the big things with with Austin and, and Vince was Vince kept trying to get the belt off of him. Yes. Apparently, th- this brilliant idea that Mr. Anderson has is, I'm going to keep fucking with Hogan until he's so mad that he gives me a title shot. Is that supposed to be his idea? I guess. This is so stupid. Let's stop talking about it. Why is, why is writing this shit so fucking hard? To the back. All right, we're going to talk about Impact today, a uh, truly horrendous program. <laughs> I hated this show passionately. You know, before the show even went on the air, I watched a horrible show, uh, sh- some shitty housewives we, show. We have often said that Impact's the worst show on television, and frankly, that cannot be. that's not true. It, if it ever was true, it's certainly not true now. Well, you know what? I, I thought so until I actually watched Impact. No. No, I'm not kidding you. Impact is just... It hurts me. It's, listen. No, you want to know why, Vinny? Because yes, actually. I'll tell you why. Because, okay, I, I put up with that Housewives show for a second just to, to, to get an idea of how horrible it was. Then you know what I did? I stopped watching it. That makes it better than Impact? Yeah. Okay. Because I don't, yeah. I don't have no. to watch it. No shit. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm saying. I don't have to watch that show. I can just change the channel. But unfortunately, I am forced... Literally against my will, I feel, to watch Impact. And thus, it is the worst television show of all time. Literally of all time. Because it's the, it's the, it, it, of all the bad shows, it's the one you have to watch. It is the one I have to watch and I just can't get out of. Well, I, I'm going to describe the 10 minutes we saw of the real Housewives of New York. Oh God. Because I can, do, I can do it quickly and in a way everyone here can understand. You know those parts of Impact, and actually there was not a great example of this this week, but usually there's one scene in Impact. you kidding me? There were at least three. There's a scene in Impact. After seeing the, the Housewives show, they, were, they all paled in comparison. And there have been many, many uh, worse examples on Impact in the past. But usually there's at least a segment a week wherein there are two or more girls screaming at each other and calling each other bitches, and it goes on for like two minutes, and we hate it. Real Housewives is that segment for an hour. Were you in a coma this week or something? Or how did you miss Velvet Sky and Winter screaming at each other? Outside the door? Velvet called her a bitch on at least six occasions. I believe she called her a bitch exactly once. No, no. No, no, no. Uh-uh. Perhaps I'm confusing bitch with biatch. That they're, 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 very well could be. It could be uh, some, some semantics being argued here. That was a goddamn horrible segment. Well, it was. I'm not going to say it wasn't. Let me play a song here before we get an impact. Or you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm in a mood right now. You hit the ground running. I don't wanna. I don't wanna play a song that's gonna be like funny and entertaining, and then try and get back here and be mad at this horrible show. You know what's the worst part of this show? I don't. I'll tell you the worst part of this show: the fact that it was the go home show for lockdown, which is usually like their best, their biggest show of the year. You know, they've they've only done sixty thousand buys twice, and they've both been for lockdown. This show is going to do. A sixth of that. If 10, they're lucky. Buys? If they're lucky. If they're lucky, this show does 10,000 buys. Why? Because the show's awful. This was... I, I did not realize this was a go-home show until you told me just now. Yeah, this was a go-home show I, like for somehow, lockdown. I was aware they had the pay-per-view on Sunday, and this was their last show, but it didn't occur to me to connect the dots and make this the go-home show for lockdown. Of course not, because it's completely stupid. It was. Hogan came down to the ring with literally a dozen men. This is this is immortal now. It is the NWO black and white. A bunch of dorks with Hogan at the helm. I think immortal maybe 50% of the active TNA roster. Hogan is sick of Anderson's bullshit. He calls him out. Mike Tanay said, and I 
Quote, The asshole side of Anderson serviced. Yes. What in God's name was he even talking about to say those words? <laughs> you know, that, the, that he acted like an asshole last week. So that led him to say the asshole side of Anderson serviced. No, surfaced. Oh, surfaced. Broke the surface. <laughs> I see. Well, that changes things a little bit. (laughs) I should hope so. Wow. Do you want to start this review over? No. Does that make the show better? That actually makes me in a better mood. Because I laughed uproariously at my own stupidity. All right. Vinny, seriously. Yeah. Can you blame me for thinking that they might have used that terminology? I didn't say I blamed you. It didn't occur to me. Frankly, that would not be the stupidest thing Tanae said in this segment. So. Surfaced. Surfaced. Hmm. Appeared. Because, see, I thought he said the asshole side of Anderson serviced. And when I heard it, I was like, Vinny, did he just say that? Actually, you did say that. And you said yes. Yeah. Because you apparently had heard what he actually said and didn't know what I'd misinterpreted him as saying. So in a sense, you confirmed that he said the asshole side of Anderson was serviced. I suppose I did. Hmm. So I blame you. Of course you do. So Anderson said that they could, uh, or Hogan said that they could do things the hard way or the easy way. Uh, Presumably the hard way involving servicing the asshole of Anderson. And Anderson said Hogan used to be his hero, but now he was disappointed. He called immortal sheep swinging from Hogan's nuts. That you heard correctly. Sheep swing? From Hogan's nuts. Hmm. I don't know. And he ranted and raved like an idiot. Hogan slapped him. Immortal jumped him and beat him up. Hogan said Anderson disrespected him for the last time. Promised to get him again later. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, he said, I'm going to take you out on my time, not yours. Mm -hmm. And he turned his back, and the rest of Immortal all beat Anderson up. And they're beating him and beating him and beating him. And Taz says, nobody coming to help Anderson. Nobody likes an Mm a-hole. And then Mike Tanay explains, it's because of his personality. (laughs) That's what he said. It's because of his personality. This is a, this is not only a (laughs) babyface. This is theoretically the top babyface. Well, I guess I Sting, Sting, but Sting would be... This is the second biggest baby face on the roster, where one announcer just said, nobody likes an asshole, and the other announcer said, it's because of his personality that nobody came to help him. Mm-hmm. Your top baby face. So anyway, sucked. It did suck. Then we had the shitty segment with Velvet banging on the door, and Winter walked out and said Angelina was resting, And Velvet wanted to know what Winter had done to her. Listen very carefully to what I'm saying, everybody. Because this is going to make... I'm going to talk about this more later. Velvet was banging on the door. And Winter said Angelina was resting. And Velvet said... Velvet said... Winter, what have you done to her? What have you done to her, Winter? So, Velvet said she was going to call out Angelina tonight, and when Angelina showed up, she was going to give her the receipt she deserved. As noted, multiple usage of the word bitch in this segment, and it sucked. It did suck. No argument there. I like the idea that apparently Velvet keeps Angelina drugged. Seven days, or Winter keeps Angelina drugged. Seven days a week, just leads around, lives her life for her, to keep her as a submissive partner. Now, before we move on, I just want everyone to ponder this question. If Velvet knows that Angelina is drugged, why does she want to kick her ass? Well, you see... I just want you to ponder that for a while. All right, we'll come back to it. Mm Mm-hmm. Immortal was having a party. They had just beat up Ken, Ken Anderson. Bischoff uh, was the party pooper. He announced he had a call from The Network. And The Network had booked a three-match Fortune vs. Immortal series, with the winner getting the man advantage of lockdown. This made everyone angry. Heels with no confidence. Yeah. 
Uh, Hogan was mad at Bischoff, said it was his job to find out who was giving the network information. Told him to go take care of it. Bubba tried to calm Hogan down, saying, basically, look, we'll just win the matches to get the man advantage. Who cares? Giving him information on what? I, what to book. He said, he said the network's not that smart. So they, they, so they watch the show? <laughs> I guess. So, Crimson versus Doug Williams. Oh, Bischoff said he'd take care of the network. And problem. Hogan said to Bubba, before you kill anybody, I want to find out who this is. Yeah. Crimson, Doug Williams, Orlando Jordan, Jesse Neal in a four-way. Respective tag partners from the corners. They apparently just randomly had a Lucha Rules match with guys getting in and out without tags. Taz had absolutely no idea why this was taking place. It was it was comical because he realized he had no idea what was going on. And so to sound like he didn't know what was going on, he started breaking down the specific suplexes that Steiner and Crimson use and how they differ. One uses a high, uh, a high crotch hold. One uses a high collar hold. Do either of them use a cross buttock hold? I don't believe so. Hmm. At least not in suplexes. So, Abyss comes out, and he attacks Crimson. And he beats the shit out of him outside, and he, he slams him onto a guardrail that's flattened. A choke slam, actually. I know a flattened guardrail on the floor, which has to suck. And Mike Tanay, in as calm a manner as possible, notes, The monster never forgets. The monster never forgets, does he? No shit! The man put a board covered in nails in his fucking spinal column and put him out of action for months. Mm -hmm. And you're shocked he does not forget this act? Well, in Tanae's defense, Abyss has been back, been back for like a month and hasn't done anything yet. I see. So apparently he did forget and was then reminded. Orlando pinned Douglas. Orlando now is wearing essentially a Leo, a leotard. Yeah. No buys. It was... The wrestling here was fine, but the booking was, as usual, stupid. Jesse and uh, Jesse disappeared because Steiner and Shannon were brawling to the back, so he just just followed them, waving his hands in the air. Then Crimson was going to follow them when Abyss killed him, so it came down to Orlando versus Doug, and they still couldn't stop doing shit. Eric Young got in the ring for comedy, and Magnus tried to interfere, so they had five guys in the ring running around. It sucked, and then finally Orlando just hit Doug with his finisher and won. Lame. Yeah. Brother Ray and RVD meeting. Basically, Brother Ray is trying to recruit him to Immortal, and RVD can't decide what he wants to do. And of course, no one cares. No. Why would you? We saw... Because RVD is like the most unlikable babyface. Well, besides Anderson. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess that's true. But we saw, I believe last week, Anderson joined Immortal and then just turned on them anyway. Mm -hmm. So why should we care if RVD does? I don't have any answer for you. It's kind of a rhetorical question. That's why I was going to do 10,000 buys. If that, I don't know. The the fact that they've done 10,000 in the past boggles my mind. Kazarian versus Matt Hardy. They've the, done 60 before. Yeah, I know. It's weird. Kazarian versus Matt Hardy. This is the uh, first match in the three-match series. They were wrestling. It was fine. And then I looked down for a second. And when I looked up, Matt was like hugging the ref against the ropes. And Kazarian was on the top rope selling. And then Matt applied a submission move that I have no idea what it's supposed to do. And uh, it rendered Kaz unconscious. So Hardy won. It was called the Ice Pick. Yes, they called it because he's cold blood. Yeah, Stone Cold Matt Hardy with the Ice Pick. I had a revelation during this match. There's nothing really against Matt Hardy and Kazarian, although <laughs> God knows Matt's out of his mind. But he didn't have like a bad match or anything like that. But it was a battle for me to pay attention to this match. And it's a battle for me to pay attention to a lot of the matches on Impact. And as much as people complain that there's not enough wrestling on Impact and there should be more, it doesn't matter. Because not a single one of these matches matters at all. Of course. Does it matter, like, one bit whether Kazarian or Matt Hardy win? Fuck no. They even put a stipulation on it. Like, the, the winning team gets the man advantage at lockdown. Mm hmm does it really matter who has the man advantage at lockdown? Of course not. Does it matter who wins at lockdown? Of course not. Nothing matters in this company. Of course. Not a single thing. It doesn't matter who wins. It doesn't matter who loses. It doesn't matter who's the champion. Nobody cares. Nothing matters. So you watch these matches, it's like, who fucking cares who wins? It doesn't matter. Correct. So unless you've got like a match that, you know, potentially has a, it could possibly be the best match of the week on television, you know, if, if the guns are in there against Beer Money, then it's like, I'm going to pay attention to this match. This match is going to be great. But, like, Kazarian and Matt Hardy, 
It ain't going to be the best match of the week. It's probably going to be just fine. It's probably going to be two minutes. And it doesn't matter who wins. So it's like I find it very hard to care enough to pay nope. attention to the match. Now you know why I looked up and saw Matt Hardy hugging the ref instead of whatever spot they did. But I bring this up, by the way. TNA did not show a replay of this, so I still don't know what happened. And I don't care. Madison came out. Claimed she hadn't slept in seven days. That's a lie. So, on a show where, admittedly, the police watch, based on the Kurt Angle, Karen Angle deal from last week, where uh, Kurt was uh, going to go to prison, but the cops watched and, and found out that he, in fact, was not guilty, and so he was exonerated. On a show where they fucking admitted last week that the police watched this show... Madison comes out and admits to uh, performing a hit and run with a motorcycle on uh, Mickey James. This show sucks. <laughs> it does. She told Tara, you're my bitch. Just take a shot every time they say bitch on this show. Well, you'll, you'll die. Your liver will burst into flame. So she buried Tara. Tara was about to give her peace of her mind. Out came Mickey James for the best moment on this show oh yeah this was the only good thing on the show mickey james cut a promo on madison rain and she showed you how it is possible to do a great interview as a woman in fact where you don't say bitch 50 times and you do not just scream at the top of your lungs correct she cut a, a passionate promo it's a great promo stating her case and saying she was going to kick this girl's ass at the pay-per-view and win her championship this was by far like, there was nothing even close, by far the best thing on this show. She was out there with her arm in a sling. She said it didn't matter what Madison had done. She wasn't going to stop her from showing up at the pay-per-view. She said Madison had made her life a living hell. And Sunday, she said, I'm going to beat you within an inch of your life, and you're going to find out how hardcore country I can be. And she made that line sound much more threatening than I did. A fantastic promo here by Mickey James. Yeah. Great stuff. Angle, Joe, and Morgan against Jarrett, Hernandez, and Pope in a random match. Joe and Jarrett got tags. Horrible comeback by Joe. I don't even know if it was his fault. There was a lot of shoving involved in his comeback, and men, men in the wrong place. It appeared that, honestly, all three men involved fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone was in the wrong spot. Then went for a choke on Hernandez. Pope came off the top. Then Morgan was beating on Pope. Then there were Nucks in the ring. Then the Nucks were out of the ring. Then just, the Nucks were back in the ring. I just wrote a bunch of shit happens. Pope hit Joe behind the ref's back. The ref turned around, counted the pin. Way too much stuff happened here. Yeah, a, a dear usual six-man mess. It did. There was a flurry of action in this that made me want to see a singles match with these men. Unfortunately, it's not a match that's going to be on the pay-per-view. But there was a bit where Kurt Angle was wrestling Hernandez, and it was really fun. And I thought, boy, I'd like to see Kurt Angle wrestle Hernandez. Well, mm -hmm. I don't get to. We had a... This... This actually may have been the depths of impact, this next segment. Jeff and Karen are in the back. And Jeff is desperately trying to flee the building. Karen is shrieking at the top of her lungs. Jeff is demanding she get in the car, and Karen is shrieking that she forgot her purse. So as Jeff is getting in the car, she goes back to get her purse. Suddenly, out comes Kurt, like a madman. Jeff, in the car, is so scared that he zooms off and leaves Karen all alone. Kurt begins to stalk Karen, who continues to screech. Kurt gets closer and closer. Kurt is talking about how, look at what you married. This is the man that you married. And then they cut away. Uh -huh. And we never saw what happened. What happened? All right. Kurt went what back inside. Happened with Kurt and Karen? Did he get her? Did she get away? Did Jeff come back? Did they have sex? What the fuck happened here? Well, I believe as Kurt was finishing up here, he began to back up. So presumably he just went inside to take a shower. <laughs> That's the best I can Not do. Not a single fucking follow up anywhere on this show? <laughs> no. Next week, Impact will open, and Kurt and Karen will still be alone in that alley. This, this, Vince, this was the go-home angle for Kurt Angle versus Jeff Jarrett in a steel cage match. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. This, this They rolled this and thought, this is going to make people have to buy this show. This angle right here. 
That is why, everybody, this is the worst wrestling show ever. Yes. Hogan and Bischoff came out. Oh, God. Now, an hour earlier on the show, Hogan came out, and, and I actually wrote down in my notes, he's moving great. Maybe he is going to have another match. So, one hour after I remarked this in my notes, Hogan comes out with a giant back brace on, and he can hardly move. Were we abducted by aliens? Have we <laughs> suffered missing time? I, Was there I, a full week or maybe a month of television where Hogan went from walking around great to suddenly being crippled? Because I could have sworn that, uh, you know, I, I was sitting in the same spot all night. I, I uh, you know, it's not like my, my cats were lying there dead because I hadn't fed them in three weeks. I suspect that missing time is not the, the answer to this, this quandary here. I suspect the answer is that this show sucks. It appears. <sighs> How do you explain this? I think the angle is supposed to be that Hogan is not really hurt. But when he's afraid of getting beaten up, he will pretend to be hurt so the other guy will leave him alone. This. <laughs> now. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> the fact that he walks around at the beginning of the show where everyone can see him not wearing the back brace indicates how stupid this is. This is almost as stupid as a theory that in the end it will come out that Dixie Carter bought Spike TV to gain control of Impact. I, I, I'm doing my best. What do you want? He called out RVD and tried to recruit him. Sting came out. And by the way, Hogan is talking about how RVD pinned Sting. I have no memory of that happening last week. None. You also had no memory of Madison running over Mickey with a motorcycle. Well, I, di I didn't until finally uh, Madison reminded us by making mention of it halfway through her fucking promo. It would have been nice to have a replay or something like that. So Sting put over the title, how awesome it was to be champ. He said the real issue was getting rid of Hogan and Eric. RVD was going to have to make a choice. And then Sting said, if he was the better man at lockdown, if Rob was the better man at lockdown, he'd become champion. But if he chose to jump in bed with Hogan and Eric, then the only way he'd ever get the title was over Sting's dead body. And then Sting said, think about that, Rob. I thought about it. And I don't get it. He said, Rob, if you're the better man at lockdown, you'll be the champion. But if you join up with Hogan and Eric, the only way you'll get this title is over my dead body. What does that mean? I guess it means... Sting will go easy on Rob if Rob is a babyface. <laughs> if he plays fair, yes. The only way he'll try to win is if Rob is a heel. If Rob cheats, he's fucked. That's the only way to, to interpret this comment. So, I hope Rob thought about this, and, and I hope he came up with a better answer than I did. Because I have absolutely no idea what Sting is talking about. So then, uh, Sting, uh, Rob walked out. In deep thought, by the way. This is a thoughtful Rob Van Dam. I can imagine. I couldn't fucking figure it out either. So Eric said Sting would never get a guy like RVD. Hogan is a great chess player, and it's checkmate on Sting. And Sting said, no, it's checkmate on you. And he kicked him in the gut and gave him a death drop. Then he went after Hulk Hogan here in 2011. Hogan begged off. And so Sting said, not on your time, on mine, and left him there. So Bischoff gets laid out again. They're they're teasing Sting and Hogan. What is going on? I don't know. Why did Eric Bischoff get beat up? More importantly, I don't care. <laughs> what in the hell is going on here? Who cares? This show sucks. James Storm and Abyss. They said that Angle versus Jarrett is now a three falls match inside a steel cage at the pay per view. The first fin pinfall. Uh, the first fall is pinfall only. The second fall is submission. And in the third fall, if there is one, it is flee the cage like a coward rules. So. I just like that they, they explain this in the middle of the Abyss James Storm match. Oh, yeah, because it gets there better. Was no other time to do it. No, it gets better. So they explain that if you pay for the show, you're going to get a three fall match with Jarrett and Angle. First pinfall. First submission, and then escape the cage rules. And 
in the match where they explain this, Abyss beat Storm clean, and thus Immortal won the best of three match contest 2-0. Two to <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> that is what happened. You've... <laughs> A best of three series was won two to nothing. And in that match, they plugged a best of three falls cage match on Sunday. Yeah. Wow. That is amazing. (laughs) You know, as stupid as we think these people are, that had to be intentional and just a phenomenal display of balls. And they also said when a bit, when uh, uh, whatever the, whatever the heel group is, immortal was in the ring. They said if Abyss had lost, Flair was scheduled to wrestle next. And Flair sitting there in a suit jacket, not suited up at all. At which point Taz said, <laughs> well, he must have just been so confident that he didn't suit up. Yeah. Okay, sure. This show. Bischoff was screaming at the network. They would not tell him who they were working with. Velvet's heaving breasts came out. Taz did not care at all about this angle, only that she didn't bend over during her entrance. Correct. That's all he cares about. She's pissed, you see, at bitches. She called out Angelina and threatened to whoop her ass. So anyway, the quandary that I gave you earlier, the question that I had you, the listener, think about, well, hopefully you've given it some thought, because what happened here was Angelina came out and confronted or velvet came out and confronted angelina and i mean to me i don't understand a lot about this show as as has been made clear during this review but i am aware that the angle is that winter is drugging angelina angelina is not in her right mind she's a victim she's a victim she's under the influence of something poisoning her mind Velvet knows this as well, because Velvet addressed it earlier. What have you done? What are you doing to her? So with all that said, Velvet calls out her friend, who is not in a proper state of mind, and she decides she's going to beat her up. So Angelina fights back, kicks the shit out of Velvet, and apparently we're supposed to feel bad for Velvet. Why would we ever feel bad for that woman? Why would we care about any of these people? Well, you know, at least... I mean, in storyline, Angelina is, in fact, a victim. But apparently, she's supposed to be a heel. And Velvet, who's beating up her best friend when she's at her lowest point, drugged into a state of zombie-like zombiness. She decides she's going to kick her ass. And fails at Yeah, and gets her ass kicked as a result. <laughs> Completely unlikable characters in it's every so, conceivable way. Just, I disagree with you now. This is a great show. This show is stupendous. I cannot write a dumber show if I tried. Yeah. So, yes, Angelina beat her up, hit a reverse DDT on a chair, and that was that. Is there a match between these two on Sunday? Does this have anything to do with anything? I don't think so. All right. I don't think they are actually wrestling. <laughs> just checking. They did a great go-home angle, if you want to call it that. If you want to attempt to call this great. At least there was some heat put on who was supposed to be the babyface. For a match that's not taking place. So then Anderson came out to run the Immortal Gauntlet. And the funny thing, this is what happens when you tape three weeks in advance. Raw ends up doing a live gauntlet, and you look like you're copying them three days later. And not only that, the Raw Gauntlet had superstars like, you know, John Cena... And Randy Orton, this one, the gauntlet was Mr. Fucking Anderson against, in succession, Murphy, Rob Terry, Gunner, and finally Bubba Ray. That's his gauntlet. You actually got one of those, uh, not wrong, but not enough detail. He was introduced as the TV champion, Gunner. Yes. Gunner! Anderson versus Murphy. Anderson versus Murphy. What a rib. Anderson sold 95% of this match, which went a minute, by the way, before hitting his finish. This would have been a bad independent match. Anderson then faced... Remember, Tanae said, remember that Murphy, as of late, has been in the immortal doghouse. Yes. Why? 
I don't know. What did Murphy do? He Something happened. I don't know. Anderson sold for 95% of the match with Rob Terry until he hit his finisher on him. Then we add Gunner, who, by the way, Gunner, I mean, he's in there with Mr. Anderson, so, you know, it's not really a fair comparison, but Gunner looked like Ric Flair in this match. <laughs> he's definitely better than Murphy. Anderson only sold 80% for Gunner before hitting another mic check. So, to bring you up to speed, for those of you with short attention spans, and God knows you'd have to have that to watch this show, Anderson beats Murphy, Rob Terry, Gunner, and finally the last man in the gauntlet is Bubba Ray, and guess what happens? I think I know what you're going to say here. Bubba Ray is beating his ass, and for absolutely no reason... As he is beating Mr. Anderson's ass, Bubba just beats up the ref. Yeah, that's actually not where I thought you were going. And the match ends. I, I suppose there was no bell. Why in God's name? <laughs> in the main event of your fucking television show, On the Go Home Show, would you fucking book a gauntlet match with a bunch of fucking geeks? You make people sit through this gauntlet, and at the end of the gauntlet... You have the heel. And it's not even like Mr. Anderson was running wild. No. And he was about to hit his finisher on Bubba Ray no. when Bubba attacked the ref for the DQ. No. No. Bubba was beating the shit out of Anderson. And for no reason, he beat up the referee for the disqualification. Yeah. Did I just talk about how nothing on this fucking show matters? <laughs> well. And you know what? I bet you good money. That if you sat down with somebody in TNA and you said, why in the fuck did you do this? They'd say, they'd have, a, they'd have an explanation, of course. They always do. Explanation would be like, we didn't want to beat Anderson or Bubba. So, why the fuck did you put them in a match together? Why in the fuck did you book this match if you didn't want either man to lose? So, after this shitty disqualification in the main event of the go-home show, they drag Anderson up to the stage, and Hogan comes out to put him through a table. By the way, is Hogan versus Anderson on the show Sunday? Don't believe so. No. So, Abyss comes out. Actually, first Sting comes out to make the save. Then Abyss comes out. Then Sting beats up Abyss. Then Sting beats up Bubba. Hogan hobbles away. Looks 500 years old. And then the show ends with Sting... Actually, this is just this segment. Sting is standing over Anderson, whom he'd saved, pointing the bat at him in a menacing manner. And Taz wants to know, what's going through RVD's mind right now? Who cares? Really? Swear to God, who cares? Sting is standing over him with a bat pointing at him, and we're supposed to care in the slightest what RVD is thinking right now? Why would we care? I don't know. I don't have an answer. And the show ends with reactions from people. James Storm is freaking out that he lost to Abyss. And now the heels have the man advantage. This was at least good, although there was a lot of yelling. Rob had nothing to say. He was in deep thought. Anderson acted like the biggest cock, pitching a world-class fit like a spoiled child about how he wanted his belt. God knows even why he wants his belt. And Sting was yelling, but not nearly in as obnoxious a manner. And then Hulk Hogan, the final thing on the go-home show, is Hulk Hogan vowing a war with Sting. Hogan and Sting? What does Hogan and Sting have to do with anything on lockdown? Nothing. Nothing. At all. This show sucks. This was a goddamn terrible show. My last verdict on the uh, people who watch Impact and enjoy it. Let's review the gauntlet match. In order. Ken Anderson versus Murphy. Ken Anderson versus Rob Terry. Ken Anderson versus Gunner. And finally, Ken Anderson versus Bully Ray. And when Bully Ray gets in the ring, when Bully Ray gets in the ring out of all these people, the fans in the building chant, You can't wrestle. That's what they said to Bully fucking to Bully Ray. Bully fucking Ray. The best guy in this match by a million miles. I've given up on these fans. Jesus Christ, you people are retarded. <laughs> Bully Ray can't wrestle. That's a new one. So, yeah. Show sucked, everybody. They didn't chant that for Murphy. No. 
or Rob Terry or Mr. Anderson. No, Bully Ray got those chants. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. <laughs> so anyway, this show was awful. It was. A god-awful program. I apologize to anybody who sat through it. I, I wish you it shouldn't. could be good, everybody. They should. I, I wish this show would be good. But there's no hope, so just give up. To the back! To get started on this thing. Impact opened. I'm not making this up. With AJ Styles riding a cable down from the rafters into a steel case that was filled with weapons. Mm -hmm. Why? Why not? <laughs> Why did any of this happen? Why not? So, he announced that he was back. He wanted Bully Ray to face him like a man. Bully Ray came out, talked shit for a while, said AJ didn't want him to come down there. He threatened to powerbomb him off the stage onto concrete this time. Then he would go to the house and take care of his wife and kids. Meanwhile, AJ was in the ring barking things like, I'll make you skinny, and I'll knock the fat right off of you. Yeah. That would be a great gimmick. I loved how Mike Tanay, as, as Bubba is heading down to the ring, says, and finally, the showdown. Finally! AJ returned four days ago. <laughs> how about when, uh, when, when Bubba said, I, I put you in the hospital for a month? A month, with a cervical injury. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's be fair. Putting a guy in the hospital for a month is like putting him in a hospital for six years anywhere else in TNA. They didn't actually have the brawl. They had a quick brawl. Yeah, AJ, they did. Well, they did have the brawl. Yeah, but, hell of a brawl. Okay, hold on. Okay. So they had a brawl. AJ put him on a table. He climbed to the top of the cage, and he was going to actually do a dive and put him through the table when Bubba fled. Yes. So they didn't actually give you the finish. They did not give you... AJ putting Bubba through a table, which I was actually stunned. I expected AJ to, to put Bubba oh, through so a did table. I, I was, I was certain cage. that he was going to actually do this move. We should also mention that Daniels and Gunner were involved in this skit. Yeah. Just, I don't even care about the details. But now, yes, I might add that when AJ went to the top of the cage to, to do the thing on Bubba through the table, Bubba got up and left the cage. He just walked out. Well, so, why the fuck was there a cage there? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. We we will discuss later the uh, pointlessness of the cage match in TNA. If any of you thought there was a point at all, so a after this ends, you know, let me say something about the cage match in TNA. All right, when they had the all cage gimmick at lockdown, it's always so stupid. Because even for fuck's sake, on the pre-show match, they started brawling outside the cage. Uh -huh. So why is there even a cage? Don't know. Well, the answer I always thought was well. Everyone can can just make each other bleed. As it turns out, no one bled until the semi main event at lockdown. So, I don't know. I don't. I don't know the point of all cage matches. It's just there. Guys go in. Guys go out. Guys, guys have to escape. Guys interfere. Guys interfere. I have no idea why that cage is there. No one bleeds. It no is. one is kept in. No one is kept out. <laughs> What's the fucking point? <laughs> it's so in the main event, someone can jump off it. Oh, woo! We'll just have one fucking cage match then. I, I agree. I will say, though, let's be honest, though. To be honest, because I'm a fair man, Lockdown always does well because for some reason, the fans still want to see a show where every match is in a cage. I remember... Remember they did that with Tim? Tim Flowers would do a, 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 an all-cage match every year, and he would always say... "This is like I swear to God, this is a quote. The Marks love him. I don't know why. I think they're fucking boring. <laughs> But every year he did an all cage show and in November, and it always was the biggest attended show of the year. Yes. So anyway, way to go TNA for doing lockdown. Sure. You still don't have to do a cage match though. No. So the uh, last we saw AJ, he was literally standing atop the cage, sad he did not get to jump off. So then Murphy and Rob Terry come out. AJ disappears. Terry gets in the ring. As they're coming down to the ring, Mike Tanay says, and I quote, Now what? <laughs> now it's Taz. Whichever. So uh, they get in the ring. Terry, he, Mike he, Tanay at least knows he's hosting a wrestling show. <laughs> Taz is apparently oblivious. Terry, Why are men heading to the ring? He called out AJ. He also called out Beer Money. Said they had something to prove to Hulk Hogan. They yeah, that's what he said. Murphy and I have something to prove. I don't know. Hmm. I don't care anymore. They're going to get payback for what Beer Money did to Ric Flair. They challenge them to a title match right there. And and that, by the way, is a torn rotator cuff that will supposedly keep Flair out of... Well, it will keep Flair out of action they, for a long they, time. They showed clips of the finish and, yes, yeah, said Flair was, had already undergone surgery. And He does have a torn they, rotator cuff. And they, they, and, they, and they showed a replay and tried to explain what was going on. So good, good, good on you, TNA. Sure. So Beer Money accepted. 
led to a match, Beer Money versus Rob Terry and Murphy inside a steel cage. Yeah. Rob Terry is a very bad pro wrestler, and he had a very bad night. I'm sure he's a nice guy. Yeah. But he can't throw a punch to save his life. Remember, like, literally, if his life were on the line, he'd punch a man, he'd be dead. Remember when uh, we watched Primetime Wrestling and Hillbilly Jim did a hammer fist <laughs> to the top of the head? So much better than Rob Terry's punches here. Yeah. And then he had to take a spine buster, and he had no idea what he was doing. He just stiffened up. He did that. That's actually amazing. Rude got him over for that. So, that being said, Beer Money, they, they, they got through their finish. They uh, hit their suplex, and then their uh, DWI finisher. The place went crazy. The match was not a failure. It was better than you would think. It's one of those where, in a weird way, this is one of Beer Money's best matches. Because the end result was a positive, and when you consider what they had going in there, what they were working with, a great accomplishment here for Beer Money. They are good professional wrestlers. They are really fucking good. The Jarrett's arrived in a horse-drawn carriage. The best thing on the show by far was Karen Angle's breasts. She had huge tits tonight. And they were there. In fact, They were I, visible. Where did I write it? I, I realized, oh, it was when they came out for the actual ceremony. I wrote that... Uh, Jeff and Karen's tits came out, and part of me thought, Brian, you always yell at these these TNA writers for for being misogynistic and that sort of thing, or you know, which I'm not in saying that her tits came out, but I mean, really, that's what came out. Yeah. I mean, they they put her in a dress, they put her in a dress so that all you could look at were her tits. Mm -hmm. So it's not my fault. I'm just being a reporter. <laughs> Indeed, her tits came down to the ring. That's. That's what you were supposed to notice. That was what you were supposed to think. Look at those huge tits. And that's what I thought. And I did. So way to go, TNA. Yes. So uh, they were riding in a horse-drawn carriage. They were both wearing white, which should have been a sign. Uh, Jeff announced he was going to crown her queen of the mountain after what she had done on the pay-per-view. Let's think about this. I'm going to make you queen of the mountain. You are thinking way too much about this. No, I'm not. Hey, sweetheart. You're not the queen of the world, or the queen of the earth, or the queen of the universe. You're the queen of the mountain. You are thinking way too much about this. Mount Rainier? It's a mountain in Orlando. Are there even any mountains in Florida? I guess Space Mountain. The, you're the queen of Space Mountain. Which, by the way, that's not something to be bragging about. Yes. What a, what? And she's excited. Yeah. I'm queen of the mountain. I'm going to find a mountain in Tennessee. You go on. Hulk Hogan came out of the ring, called out RVD. Oh, the Smoky Mountains. Well, there you go, then. You're Miss Smoky Mountain. I bet Cornette did that once in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Probably did. Hulk said he was in charge. She had some great Smoky Mountains this evening. I'll say. RVD said that, uh, he actually said that, once Hulk Hogan had been a great hero to everyone, to fans and the boys alike, and he had carried the business on, business on his back. But now that he's a heel, and he said it, he used that word in that exact tone of voice. He said, now that now that he's a heel, he turned his back on everyone for ratings. You turned it all around for ratings, he said. Yeah. So now everyone wishes you'd get the hell out of the business, which made me, in my brain, I hit pause. If he turned his back on people for ratings, and he's drawing... You know, theoretically, if he did this, that means he's drawing ratings. And if he's drawing ratings, why would anyone want him out of the business? All I know is that I don't blame RVD for this. He was just reciting sure. horribly written bullshit. Sure. But I do blame RVD a little bit, because Hulk Hogan then had to do a promo. And he had to talk about... RVD being a either a big fish in a small pond, a small fish in a big pond. Where was RVD drawing indoor attendance records and slamming giants? He he cut a promo on Sting after Sting came out. He said he was in charge, not these network geeks. Said he was going to be in a business corner tonight versus RVD. The network wasn't here. He was running the show. Main event was Sting versus Matt Hardy. Anyway, the point is Hulk Hogan was goddamn phenomenal on the mic here. <laughs> You know, he was, he was like, I swear to God, and, and I'm an honest man, I know people think that I, I am biased towards impact and that sort of thing, but I'll be perfectly honest here, this was the best promo anyone has cut outside of The Rock, like, this year, the best delivery. He was awesome! And he was reading bullshit! I, like... I, 
could not even believe how good Hogan was here. And he was really good at the end, too. The best part was when Sting announced, because, of course, Sting is, has he's chummy with the network, and he announced that Rob Van Dam would be getting a title shot at the next pay-per-view. And Hogan declared, you must be smoking the same crap he is. I want some, too, because I want to be delusional. I want to be like a fruitcake, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, name another guy. Maybe Flair's been really good here and there this year. You did miss the Flair promo after Daniel jumped off the cage. Sure. That was pretty great. Sure. But, I mean, okay, so so other other than Flair... Other than- Rick Flair. Rick Flair and The Rock. Yes. Name someone else who's been better than Hogan was in this well, segment this year. Pro, the, the Cena's pro, been complete shit. Promos in 2011 do blow. I can't think of anybody in WWE that, that's doing promos even close to what The Rock is doing, or Hogan here, or no. Flair. So yeah, this was, this was awesome. Hogan was awesome here. <laughs> Didn't make me care one bit about anything, but he had great delivery. He had great passion. He had great passion. Great energy. So we went from there to Madison and Tara screaming at each other more. So Madison blamed her loss at the pay-per-view on Tara. Tara replied that, well, you told me to stay in the back. Madison blew her off. And then she was up. She's Tara said it was a one-on-one match. Madison said, yeah, one-on-one. Where were you? So you see, Madison Rain was upset that Tara did not try to interfere in her steel cage match. Mm-hmm. Because it never occurred to Madison Rain that the point of a sealed cage is to prevent interference. Yeah. Idiots. They're fools. They're fools. Kurt Angle and Eric Young fed beans to horses. That's all I have to say. This was bullshit. Got worse. That's horseshit. Serena and Rosita versus Tara and Madison. All that happened this entire match was Tara and Madison screaming at each other. No. They started this match and got the heat during the break. They came back from commercial... The match had not even started when they went to commercial. When they come back, Tara is going to make the hot tag to Madison. If you want to call it that. So Madison doesn't want it. Tara slapped her. So Madison got in, and Madison played as a heel, the babyface in peril. Then she just started beating up Rosita, who was also a heel, who now had to play babyface in peril. That's why all all your your claims of heat and hot tags and stuff, it's bullshit. They were just doing things. So Madison got uh, uh, distracted. Sarita hit a clothesline and pinned her, which all of this was mistimed. Yes. These agents. I, you know, it's just like, it's, it's like when I asked um, uh, Jerry Jarrett, uh, you know, have you ever spent two months writing one show? And he just laughed uproariously. And he said, I would be so fucking embarrassed if I had to say it took me two, two months to write a show. Because that's what Russo said. It took him two months to write that January 4th show a couple of years ago. Yes. And, and Jarrett just was out of his mind with the hilarity of this statement. I just cannot even imagine telling people I actually have agents in this company. You know? No, no one's watching this shit anyway. A- th- who are their agents? I know who they are, but what's wrong with them? These No one can put a match together in this company. This was the most horribly put together match in about five minutes. It was god awful. And there were more all throughout the show. These people have no idea how to put matches together. Where are they yeah. getting these agents? I don't know. Well, I know where they're getting them. Why aren't they doing a better job? The unemployment that line. It's not like they're raiding agents from WWE. People are unemployed, and then they come in as agents for TNA, and they don't know what they're doing, and they keep getting paid. Because Dixie Carter doesn't even know what a fucking good match is. This was just a horrible match. And then... Ah, oh, this is corny. So we got a coronation. We it started off exactly like the Michael Cole thing on Raw, just as stupid, just as pointless, and then poop fell on Karen Angle. That's what happened, everyone. This is the worst show I've ever seen. It's just I'm not defending this at all. Uh, Kurt Angle came out. He gave Jeff, who really does have cracked ribs, or what was it, severely bruised ribs? Yes. He gave an angle slam onto the chair. Sure. What the, why? Because they're stupid. But. Okay, I really don't think Jeff is that stupid, and, more importantly, it's his fucking ribs! Yes, Jared is that stupid, Vinny. I guess he is. Because he took that goddamn move on a chair for this show. For for this this segment! Yeah. So... Smarten up, you jackasses! Kurt Angle then cut a promo as his wife was covered in filth, or his ex-wife was covered in filth and, and, and poison, basically. And he said that he would never lay a hand on this on his ex-wife, the mother of his children, but he found a woman who would. Is that any more noble? 
<laughs> is that any more decent or heroic? I think that's worse. It may be. I don't know. His mistress is going to kick Karen's ass. That may Kurt be worse. would at least have remorse. I suppose. This woman won't. So this is actually much worse than him laying his hands on her. Yeah. So, yeah. This segment was horrendous. It was the worst. That may have been the worst Dave Pat segment of the year. Hulk was backstage talking to Abyss. Then he told Abyss to hide, basically, so he could talk to Anderson. He asked Anderson who the spike exec was. And and how did Abyss hide, by the way? He stood in the exact same spot and they moved the camera. <laughs> it's true. That is true. Hulk said he hated Anderson and 10 years ago he would have done something about it. Anderson tried to get him to try something, but Hulk is old. So nothing happened. <sighs> and Abyss versus Rob Van Dam. Anderson was the biggest asshole. I know that's his gimmick, but he was such an asshole I felt sympathy for Hulk. I was hoping <laughs> Hulk would hit him with the pipe. I don't think that's what I'm supposed to be thinking right now. I don't think... I don't know. I can't even understand this Mr. Anderson gimmick. I just don't even get it. It's... Like, yes, he calls people assholes so they cheer him, but he's such an unlikable character all the time. Yeah. You're begging for someone to kick his ass. Yes. And and he's supposed to be the baby face I, that you feel sympathy for. I don't He I never don't gets know. a fair shake. I don't care. I don't know. I don't care. Abyss I just need someone to explain Damn. this to me. Just please explain this Mr. Anderson thing to me, because I just don't get it. I don't get anything on this show. But this in particular, I just don't get. I mean, do they actually think that fans at home are like, boy, I sure hope Mr. Anderson gets his revenge on so-and-so. Brian. I don't even know who he's feuding with. Brian. Who's he even feuding with? Oh, Sting. Well, Anderson, Sting, and RVD all feud- are all feuding with each other, and they're all the top three baby faces. I was hoping this would be over after their cage match. They're still fucking feuding. Sure. Why, why do you think anything would ever end in a cage match? RVD and Abyss. RVD immediately. Springboard kicked him right in the face and knocked out his teeth. Okay. I must... <laughs> I must say, I once watched Shawn Michaels wrestle Rob Van Dam, and he put... For everything, he put both arms in front of his face like a football player was about to clobber him. Mm-hmm. Because Shawn's smart. So, I must say, Abyss deserves... It's not like this is a surprise that Rob Van Dam might stiff you. He should have been more prepared, is all I'm saying. I so, don't know how to say this, but Abyss was obviously pissed off about this. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, well, I mean, and I don't blame him, obviously. I don't, no, yeah. I don't, I don't blame him because goddamn I'd be pissed off if this geek kicked me in the face. And it's not like it's the first person RVD has kicked. Mm-hmm. I mean, you need to put both arms and both legs up when you're wrestling with this guy. Yeah. But with that said, look at Abyss. He's missing teeth. He's now worried about his good looks. Well, I suppose I suspect it had more to do with the pain he was in. Well, I understand the pain and all damage. That. But, but but yes, this is a man who, for example, he still has giant scars on his arms from going through barbed wire, and I've seen him on fire. I have seen him punch thumbtacks. This is not even close to the worst thing that's ever happened to him. I'm just thinking, shouldn't this be a benefit that now he has bottom teeth he can take out? Maybe I don't. I hadn't thought of that. But yes, he did punch Rob in the head a lot. Didn't blame him. Should have hit him harder. I got no problem with this. Uh, Is it that hard to protect your opponent? I, I, I if you're Rob Van Dam, I guess. I don't know. I. <laughs> I mean, I, the, the part. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know. Accidents. It, 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 listen, accidents do happen. Yeah, but at the same time, to Rob more often than other people. At the same time, when Rob found out he kicked the guy in the face, he, he had a look of concern on his face. And it's like, well, if you're so concerned, why did you fucking kick him right in the face? Why did you kick him right in the face? Don't know. Because you know what? Later on in the match, he had to do his, his rider kick off the top rope. Didn't kick him in the face, did he? No, he didn't. You know, because he probably thought, hmm, I kicked this guy in the face. I better be careful this time. Yes. Why don't you be careful every time? You would think. That's just my thought. And it, and it all goes back to the ultimate quote. It used to be that... We uh, took care. Of, we 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 didn't hit each other, and everyone thought it was real. Now we really hit each other, and everyone assumes it's fake. Yeah. 2011, everybody. So, Hogan, uh, what happened here? Hogan distracted the ref. Abyss used a pipe and won. And then Hogan and Abyss went to kill Rob. When who should make the save? But Crimson. So Crimson, I guess, getting revenge on Abyss for Abyss getting revenge on Crimson killing him. Best I can do. Sting got a promo. Crimson hit the ropes. By the way, the same ropes Hogan was leaving. And he nearly knocked him off the apron like uh, like uh, Lillian, Lillian Garcia. Yeah. And, and Charlie Haas. And Charlie yes. Haas. 
Except Hogan at this point is probably more fragile. That is true. He would would have less able to defend himself if he fell off the apron. Singh got a promo. He said he wanted Jeff Hardy back because he's one of the best of all time. And if Hogan wanted to book him in a match leader, that's fine because he had no problem wrestling because he's a fucking wrestler. Not his exact words. I'm paraphrasing. All I can say, and this actually came even more true in the main event, I am stunned. Absolutely stunned that Sting still gives any kind of shit about this company. He does. It's amazing. He works and very hard. He, he always, works very hard. He always wants, gives it his all. Yes, and he wants his segments to be as good as they possibly can be. And this is a guy who, not only, did, I'm, I'm sure he knows the show is terrible, but he also sees the other people he's working with slacking off and showing up high and kicking their opponents in the teeth, and there are no repercussions. Mm-hmm. The only reason to give a shit is... Pride. Personal pride. Personal pride. And the fact that personal pride can weather the storm of this company astounds me. Yeah. Good for Sting. Yeah. Fine man. Matica promo. I had no idea what he said. I was just stunned they brought back the Jeff Hardy belt. He was outraged that Sting had thrown his belt down like it was meaningless. And he said tonight he was going to take Sting's world title. It's a title match? It, yeah, I think it was, yeah. Yes. Jeff, or Matt did a YouTube promo and he had the Diva title there. And and I thought it was just a wacky Matt YouTube promo that he was going to fight for his brother. No, he's now wearing that belt to the ring on impact. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully not, not after this. I, I presume the idea is eventually they want to bring Jeff back as a babyface to feud with Matt. I don't Because I don't that's care. worked out so well all the times <laughs> that that's been tried. Yeah. So, Morgan came out for a promo. Said he was done with Hernandez. He wanted a title shot now. His, his time is now, and if he doesn't get it, he's going to take it. This brought Scott Steiner out. Scott said, if you're the DNA of TNA, man, if I had your genetics, I would kill myself. No, wait. First I'd kill myself, then I'd hang myself. Really the best week for a hanging reference? Hell. I I can't even blame TNA because they're probably so goddamn stupid they don't even know what's going on. Yeah. So uh, Scott said he should be the guy at the front of the line. I was hoping they would just argue about who has superior genetics. But it broke down and who wanted to be champion. So, Scott Cuddy heel promo. He's just magically a bad guy now. Talking about how her, uh, he wasn't impressed with Morgan and uh, ran him down a lot and talked about fucking his girlfriend. So, Morgan tried to be respectful to Scott. Talked about how he was a great wrestler at Michigan before getting into pro wrestling. And he said Scott Steiner was, and this is a quote, he was the first man. The first man. To bring sports into pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. He was the first athlete to cross over from <laughs> amateur to pro. Scott Steiner, everybody. He's 120 years old. <laughs> the, the, the last like half hour of the show just made my brain snap repeatedly over and over again. That line right there. Never before has a man crossed over from athleticism into pro wrestling. Yeah. Because before Scott Steiner, all pro wrestlers were not athletes. They were, yeah, no, they, not only were they, yeah, not only was it fake, but they were not athletic. So this ended with Scott kicking him in the balls. What happened was Steiner in uh, the heel in a fair fight kicked the larger Matt Morgan's ass. <laughs> yes, yes, he I did. watch this fucking show every week. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> don't know what's wrong with the show. Okay, there's more. Who should appear on television cutting a promo but Miss Tessmacher? Brooke's ass has returned. <laughs> but we still can't see her ass. She was cutting a promo. A passionate pro wrestling style promo. She said a lot had changed since a lot had changed changed Jesus Christ. A lot had changed since she was gone. But one thing that had not changed... And by the way, four months, she said. Yeah. Like this had been an eternity. Like, like epochs had gone by. Eras. One thing that had not changed was her determination to be a champion. <laughs> How is that not a change? You never mentioned that before. Not one time. She may have. No. On, like, explosion. She just talked about fucking Kevin Nash and the Pope. And, and probably Eric, too, if I go back at it. That's all she ever did. And then Eric demoted her to being a pro wrestler because that was a lower status than whore. <laughs> that I remember. 
Wow. That's what happened. Well, it is. <laughs> so, I hadn't looked at it that way. That is exactly what happened. And also, by the way, because she's a woman in TNA, she must say bitch during her promo. Of course. Speaking of. <laughs> my notes you know, were- there was another line here that somebody <laughs> did. Um, what was it? It was very early on in the show where uh, it actually may have been. It wasn't Hogan. It was like somebody brand new. Who uh, who who used the same line uh, on my on my time? Who was it? I don't remember. Hogan, it, it's Hogan's deal lately. Yeah, but I, I like eight people have now used that term on my time. Yeah, it's like the same guys writing all this shit. It's amazing. Okay, my notes for the next segment begin with a one word sentence. It just reads "velvet." Let me let me let me talk about this segment. Okay. Velvet is backstage, and she's all wrought up about Angelina. She actually says, Angelina is my friend and all, but she went too far when she hit me with my own finisher, a DDT, and left me laying. Now, normally, I don't remember a goddamn thing that happened the week before, (laughs) but I do remember that last week on this show, Velvet, knowing that Angelina is not in a proper state of mind, Demanded Angelina come down to the ring, and she tried to kick Angelina's ass after admitting that she believed Angelina was drugged and not herself. She still was going to kick her ass, and Angelina in the fair fight kicked Velvet's ass in self-defense. Velvet, the babyface here, sees this completely differently. It's actually, it's actually even worse than what you're saying, because what Velvet said was, she knew, and this is a quote, Angelina has not been of her own mind and body, but then she went a little too far. (laughs) That sentence right there, if you have a grasp of the English language, you should realize makes no sense. Well, no. Cannot be comprehended by a rational human being. She talks for a little more, and then she said, know what I'm saying. And I thought, no. (laughs) I have no idea what you're trying to say. So Winter showed up. They screamed at each other for a while. Velvet explained why she had not gone to the authorities with this. She admitted that 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 <laughs> Angelina had been drugged. That's, the word, That's she the word she used. You drugged her. So she said she said she had not gone to the authorities because she was having too much fun taking care of things herself. You were a shitty friend. Yeah. So then Angelina showed up to kick Velvet's ass. She hit her once, and after that, it incapacitated Velvet to the point where she could not defend herself any further, but she was capable of forming complete sentences while getting her ass kicked. Mm-hmm. Angelina threw her into a wall repeatedly as Velvet screamed, Angelina, what are you doing? <laughs> yes. This was... Unbelievably horrendous. This is a horror... This is bad sketch comedy level. I could not... This... Angelina Velvet Winter Storyline is the worst storyline in professional wrestling in maybe I, the entire decade. This may be worse than the Kane Edge feud. Oh, oh, b- b- Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, it is. By far. You're right. You're right. By it's far. Significantly worse. So, the main event was Sting wrestling Matt Hardy. In a world champion versus it, Divas champion match. Yes. It opened... Matt coming out with that fucking belt around his waist looks like such a geek. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he does. Matt Hardy is a geek, and he's a bigger geek with a belt around his waist. With this belt around his waist. Before the match started, Immortal and Fortune got into a brawl. Sting got distracted by this brawl, was watching it, and... I mean, did he come up with this idea, like he went to them and said, Why don't I come to the ring wearing Jeff's belt? So that he could go to the ring with a belt around his waist. A world title belt. Have is that been, what he did? Has he been paying to what Matt Hardy's been doing in, in, with his life for I the last six months? I realize that, but I just, like, what? There is nothing I would put past these two men. I just bury my head. Uh, what? I just bury my head. Oh, uh, yeah. So Sting was watching this brawl, just chilling, when Gunner runs out and hits him in the leg with a fucking lead pipe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let me talk about this. <laughs> They're, so they, they come down to the ring, and Immortal tries to attack Sting, Fortune makes a save, out comes Gunner. And what happened was, he has got a giant pipe made out of steel, 
And he proceeds to hit Sting right in the fucking leg with it. Right in front of the referee. I mean, the referee is looking right at him. Like, staring at him. And what does the referee do, Vince? Why? He rings the bell. To start the match! Yes. Not to call for a DQ, but to announce the action has begun. I hate this show. It's a goddamn terrible show. It sucks a penis. Can You know, there's nobody in this company that will pull together all the referees and explain that when someone is going to attack somebody, don't fucking look. Is it that hard? Tie your damn shoe. Vince, there were guys in Tulalip that were better referees than everybody in TNA, except maybe Earl Hebner. This was Earl Hebner. No, this was his was son. This? I'm pretty sure it was his son. Oh, fuck, I don't know. I, I, but I mean, for fuck's sake, I, I, I am now numb. I am now numb to shitty refereeing in this company. In Tulalip Championship Wrestling, the referees knew not to look at interference. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Why is this so fucking hard? Because, Brian, the people running this company have no idea what they're doing. Somebody has it, to know, no. Vince. Sting! Can't Sting say to the referee, okay, before the match, Gunner's going to hit me with a pipe, so make sure you're not fucking watching. Can't somebody just say that, please? I, I don't have an answer for you. I am stumped. Sting is the only good thing on this show. For being old and, and, breasts. old and banged up, he did totally fine in this match. Yes. <laughs> and, 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 you know, Matt, I, I ripped him, but you know, it's not like Matt sucks. So they had a... Perfectly fine main event. Acceptable main event. Sting pinned him. Sting was selling his leg the entire time. He could not hook the scorpion because he had a bad leg. So and, and when and when he had the chance, he hit his scorpion death drop and got the pin. This was fine. Then Anderson ran down and he hit the mic check on Sting. And then he hit one on Matt Hardy too just because. And then it ended, but it wasn't over yet. Mike Tanae told us to stick around for impact reactions. So they're still doing reaction. It's just no longer its own show. Which is just... Drives me nuts because they actually had some decent segments on the actual reaction, and the reaction segments they put on Impact suck. We had like Karen and Jeff shrieking and screaming for two minutes. Then we had Hogan threatening to kill Anderson. This was actually pretty damn good. And then we had a camera guy asking Anderson, Who did you just hit your finisher on? Yes, the camera guy has absolutely no idea what's going on either. And then we had Sting saying he didn't give a shit about TV executives. He just wanted revenge for what Anderson did, which was he gave him a move. I hate this show. <laughs> all I got out of all this was Hulk Hogan's line where he said, quote, This network thing is coming at me like a double-fisted kangaroo. <laughs> That's what he said. I love Hogan. <laughs> he had some great ones on the show. Hogan, Sting, and Flair. I, I can't believe I'm saying it, but they are by far the best thing on this show. In 2011. What does that tell you? It tells you that, that the people in charge of the show have absolutely no idea what they're doing, and the only guys that are good are the guys that have been around forever and actually know what they're doing. Yeah. God, this makes me sad. What a horrendous show. So, shit as always, everybody. Yeah. This... Congratulations, TNA. <laughs> you produced another shitty show that you thought was so good that you gave it a stupid title. I realize WWE titles are shows, too, but they don't actually put it on television. Because that would be bullshit. <laughs> Let me play a song, and then we're going to wrap this up here. God, this show pissed me off. It was a horrible show.